you and I speak all the time. We talk about how your service as a senior technical advisor to the 1-6 committee, how you were in the facts, you were in the evidence. That's what you dealt with, the data. You have now had the chance to digest this most recent indictment for election interference. How much of what you've seen in that indictment lines up with the work that you were doing for the 1-6 committee? You know, surprisingly, it lines up really well, right, Katie? I mean, you're talking about a, a committee that did a lot of interviews. We saw a lot of data. But what interested me is I went back and looked at the alternate electors or the people they called in to testify about the alternate elector scheme, and I saw how many took the fifth. And I'm wondering, you know, when you're doing a public trust investigation like with Congress, Katie, as you're aware, it's not a criminal investigation. So you don't really have the levers to get the information that you need in a law enforcement authority way um, that you have with the FBI and DOJ when you're doing a congressional investigation. So while I'm watching this play out, it's lining up with the data we saw, too. I, I, I wish I could, uh, I wish I could uh, you know, go into the actual specifics of the text messages and also the phone records. But uh, we really do see the alternate electors talking to Mark Meadows, but also the phone calls to individuals like rally planners and also people in the White House from alternate electors or White House planners. So it is lining up down, down the road. I think we're going to see even more. You know, Denver, let's talk about what's going to come down the road. There are currently six unindicted co-conspirators, and there's been a lot of talk about it being strategic on Jack Smith's part to only go after Donald Trump right now. Do you think the prosecution continues to plan for maybe some of those co-conspirators that are unindicted to cooperate, and if they choose not to do so, to their folly, I think, do you think we might see some more charges or maybe some more indictments down the road? Katie, I can't imagine we wouldn't see more charges. I, 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 there is so many people that are involved. I mean, if you look at the 2,319 text messages, but it's also the amazing amount of virtual communications that we saw well outside of text messages, Katie. Uh, and I think we are so, we have different levels. You know, we had six or seven different groups that were involved in January 6th from rally planners, Trump's inner family, right, uh, Trump's cabinet. Uh, we also had the DOJ charge defendants. We had the Oath Keepers and Proud Boys, and we had the alternate electors and state legislators. All of those were groups that were actually coordinating with sometimes only one, I would say, one hop away as far as communication is concerned, which really surprised us when we started really digging into the phone records and things like that. So I think on the command and control side and, on, and even on the violence side, even though we've seen Rhodes and Tario with seditious conspiracy um, issues, right, and and um, convictions, I think you're going to see more people, especially on the follow the money side. Uh, that is one thing, as you know, Katie, I've been really stuck on was the hundreds of millions of mm -hmm. dollars that Stop the Steal actually generated. And I think that's something we're, we're still going to see is really the amount of money that was actually funneled into the campaigns and into, Donald Trump pa into Donald Trump's PACs. And I'm so glad you brought that up, because I also love to follow the money. In your book, The Breach, you laid out a roadmap of Trump's indictments, and you say that the former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, tweets were the Rosetta Stone. Where's Mark Meadows? How can you not have the chief of staff figure more prominently in this indictment? And is, is he—I've always thought he's a cooperator for months. He's had his own federal exposure and his own state exposure. But what's going on? Where's, where's Mark Meadows? Hey, Katie, you know the first thing I read was the cons was the actual co-conspirator descriptions, and I didn't see any description of Mark Meadows. So mm -hmm. I actually believe he's probably a, right. I think he's a massive part of this investigation, uh, especially if he gave up all of his emails, which we saw a lot of that also. I think people need to go back and read. There was an over 200-page filing by the January 6th committee concerning Mark Meadows when you've been talking about emails from the individuals that were conducting the cyber investigations. Um, you know, in Antrim County, uh, and also some of the people with the ASOG, the ASOG. I hope people go look that up. Um, but right. Meadows was involved in every single facet of this, from follow the money to the fake cyber investigations to maybe using national assets or tasking in order to look at foreign interference that was completely faked. Uh, it, it's interesting. I think Mark Meadows has a lot to say about every single person that's indicted and those that are to come. So I think we should all applaud Mark Meadows because I think he's going to be the MVP of this investigation. I'm only going to give flowers when flowers are due. Denver, I got literally less than a minute, but I have to ask you this. You and I talk about the war and the continuing war on democracy. I want to ask you about the fact that some of the Republican candidates right now say that they'd be willing to pardon Donald Trump if he's convicted and if they win. What are your thoughts quickly on that? 
Those are just cynical individuals that are looking at the poll and re responding to the base. They don't care about the American people. They care about getting through the nomination. Basically, he's going to vote for them at that level in fundraising. That's it. It's a cynical way of looking at the world. And I think it's truth tellers like you, Katie, and other individuals looking at facts that are going to make the difference on this war to protect our democratic institutions. Well, we always need people like you, Denver Riggleman, to help us process and analyze and get to the truth. Denver Riggleman, thank you, as always, for joining me. I appreciate it.